There are many professions and occupations that were close to black people and women in particular in the past, but changes in our society have opened up a lot of opportunities, especially in the areas of finance, where technically competent women are rising to occupy the most senior positions. And one such person has been a trustee and chairperson of various funds and pensions. Ms. Jolie Mukorosi is an experienced trustee who now provides education in that field, and she joins us tonight. Thank you very much, Ms. Mukorosi, for joining us. We appreciate it. It's an honor to be a guest here. Right, and uh, the CV is the CV. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it. But I have to go back to the speech you gave at the Sefako Makatu students' event recently. And I listened to you very carefully, and I said the yes, message yeah. went down very well, and I observed in the room the youngsters were quite excited, and it was good inspirational talk that you gave. According to you, what is the key thing that motivates you and should motivate any young person who wants to get going in his or her life? First of all, I think that it's important to have a dream because a dream, um, I mean, we will speak about having a vision as for a company, a mission, but you need to have a dream. You need to start somewhere. Mm. You need to envisage a future that is not as it is what would it look like? Mm. And then you aspire towards that. Mm. Um, so first, we need to dream. We need to have dreams. Well, dreams which are important. Have. Sometimes you can you sit know? under a tree and yes. have a dream. <laughs> or lie down on a bed and have a dream and be happy. But you need to do something about, to, about that dream. You need to do to something to about yeah? that dream. And there's a couple of things that you need to do about your dreams. Mm. Um, your dreams need to be executed. <laughs> and in order to execute that dream, there is an element of courage that's required, first of all, to take it out of the realm of a dream into the realm of the present, for mm. it to materialize. Mm. There is an element of knowledge that is required. I mean, that's, that's why we go to university. That's why we uh, go to school. Um, there is wisdom that needs to be coupled with that knowledge, which is why older people would typically be your lecturers and your teachers who would teach you, or your mentors, or mm. your managers, or other business people. There is, um, uh, we spoke, we've spoken about courage, we've spoken about knowledge. There's a discipline that needs to go with it. And then there's something that is really lacking, and that is focus. Mm. A lot of people are not focused. They, they are not like, have you seen a dog when it's got a bone? It takes, <laughs> <laughs> it takes quite a bit for that dog to give up that bone. Yeah. It is focused on that thing, yes. and it wants it and it's not going to give it up easily, especially to another dog. Yes. Maybe to a master it would, but not to another dog. Yes. So that's something that I've seen is really lacking in people is that I'm focused, I'm determined, and I'm going to execute the stream that I have. Well, I was, in your talk, you spoke about your experience in the financial services field, for instance, right? And yes, the, sir. I think I'm correct in what I said at the mm -hmm. beginning that some of the opportunities were closed to particularly women and the financial services to a large extent, continues to be one of those areas where close to everybody else except a few mm -hmm. who are there. And you said, you know, you were mistaken on the occasion to be a domestic somewhere because you will happen to be the only black person and woman for that matter. Just tell me about your journey into the financial services field as a professional. It's, it's been a very interesting journey. Um, I, when I got into financial services, I got in because I am determined to see Africa fulfill its potential. That is why I got in. Mm. I, I want to see economic prosperity at the most basic human levels because it brings dignity. Mm. When, you, when you've got money, you're a dignified person. Mm. You know, you don't, um, you don't worry about your stomach. You, are, you, you wake up and you walk differently. You dress differently. You have different aspirations. You can afford and principles. You can um, afford principles yeah. when you've got money. Yeah. So at the very basic level, dignity, money brings dignity to people. Let's start there. Um, so when I got into financial services, obviously you come with your degree. You listen to the hype from your lecturers. You think, wow. You get in, and it's a little bit of a shock for the person who enters the system, especially the female who enters the system. First of all, it's a very male-dominated profession, especially beyond a, a certain point. Um, the closer you get to the money, in the sense that when you get into investments, you get to investment banking, there's nearly an expectation that you're going to be one of the boys. Mm. And let's face it, I'm not one of the boys. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, but... 
in addition to expectate the expectation that you will be one of the boys, you will behave like one of the boys, there are those challenges around being a woman. So you're going to have children. You're going to have babies, mm. unlike other, unlike uh, men. Mm. So those are some of the challenges that cropped up at the beginning of of my career. But I must admit that the industry has changed quite a bit from the time when I started to today. I think that there are more opportunities, and it is easier to get, especially as a black female, to take those opportunities. But to hold on to those opportunities is still difficult. Mm. I must admit that that getting your foot in the door is one step in the game. Mm. Climbing the ladder is a completely different thing. Remaining in the game and remaining relevant in the game. So what, what kind of uh, uh, skill, personality do you think you need to develop really to stay in the game, hold on to the opportunities as they come? From a personality perspective, I believe that one of the, the disadvantages of financial services is that we have... Um, nearly esteemed certain personality types. And yet, we are an industry that serves people. So you need every personality kind. Mm. You need diversity, quite a bit of diversity actually, to serve people adequately. However, there are some characteristics that you need to develop. Mm. Mm. One of them is resilience. If you're not resilient, then the industry will chew you and spit you out. Unfortunately, you'll become yesterday's news very quickly. So resilience is very important. Staying on top of the game. I mean, this is an industry where things change on a minute by minute, mm. moment by moment basis. Um, if you if you look at traders, for instance, um, the BRICS vote can move uh, a whole economy in a particular direction, um, and that has big implications for people's money and investment in the future. So. You need to stay on top of your game. You need to yes. stay relevant. Yes. You also need to network. That is a big downfall of, I would say, a lot of black people, and in particular women. It is not necessarily the person who knows the most who makes it. It is the person who is most strategic who makes it in this industry. Now, I noticed that you, know, you have occupied so many senior positions in provident funds, pension funds, and so on, and I'm sure you're still very busy in that regard. And the uh, thought that came to my mind, if you occupy those positions of being chairperson or director, then governance is very important. And the, at the center of governance is the question of ethics. And we're talking about money here. Just talk, mm -hmm. talk me through about the responsibilities that go with the kind of work that you do. Um, there's, there's quite an onerous responsibility. I mean, uh, just in our industry alone, only approximately 4% of South Africans will retire with sufficient funds to retire, even though many more will save towards a retirement fund, which then creates an onerous responsibility on the trustees and particularly the leaders of the board mm. to ensure that that money is managed in a way that is to the satisfaction of uh, not just the regulator, but the reasonable expectations of members. Mm. And I say reasonable because, you know, there are things like people... People, people will wake up and, and look, at the, the, look at the stock market. The stock market moved 5%. Why hasn't my retirement fund moved 5%? So that's not a reasonable expectation. It's also not reasonable that we will be particularly, we will invest in particularly risky investments. And yet sometimes um, that is how people get um, unusual returns. But um, going back to your, your, your question on ethics and things like that, ethics are really critical in the industry. Uh, I cannot overemphasize how important it is that the people that manage funds are not only ethical, but they remain ethical. Because it is easy to um, come off the ethical road. It's very easy. There are opportunities to, to be bribed, to look a particular direction or to overlook a particular action. Um, that happens all the time, every day in my industry. In fact, I had when I had breakfast this morning, I had a conversation with an asset manager about how um, we are avoiding certain uh, we we the, by 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 not avoiding certain um, 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 practices. You actually put yourself up mm. for failure later. Right now, you you are a mother, and um, uh, Panelia said a homemaker, and I'm sure you have told me. <laughs> no, I make a beautiful home. <laughs> I, I don't mind being called a homemaker. <laughs> Some people take exception to that, right? I don't take exception. It's an honor. <laughs> 
-hmm. And uh, yeah, homemaker, mm -hmm. wife, professional, leader, and so on. But people who try to juggle all these kinds of roles and still remain strong, intact, and keep on moving forward, right? Mm -hmm. And become leaders like yourself. What are the qualities generally that sustain you and that you believe that anybody who develop them will go far in their lives? Um, one of them, one of those qualities I believe, and it's not really a quality, it's a habit. It's a thirst for knowledge. Mm. I have an insatiable appetite for knowledge. So I will read at every opportunity that I can. Yes. Um, somebody coined the phrase that uh, leaders are readers. Um, and as you amass knowledge, you are able to respond to the circumstances mm. that you find yourself mm. in. So I would say that is a critical um, quality. One is also one of empathy, because as you lead, you lead people, you're not leading machines or mm. a number mm. or um, the development of empathy, but also um, one skill that is um, not easy to develop, you only develop it through experience, is knowing what to say yes to and what to say no to what to focus on. Mm. You only learn that one through trial and error, unfortunately, mm. um, and to some degree, advice from other people. But uh, humility, and humility is not necessarily, you know, people are, oh yes, you mm. know, Baba. Mm. Humility is knowing that I don't know everything, so mm. I, I will need to go and ask somebody. I ask somebody, can you be my mentor? Mm. Or I don't know this particular thing. I mean, retirement funds, uh, whenever I talk to retirement fund boards of trustees in an education setting, I always say there's no single individual in the industry who knows everything. Mm. And the moment you make peace with that, you're then open to learn more and find the answer through the assistance of other people. If you're not a team player, it becomes very difficult to even go forward in any meaningful way. You will go, they say if you want to go, if you want to go far, go with others. You, you, you cannot go about it your, yourself in the long run. Jolly we'll fall off the bus. Much appreciated. Thank you very much for spending time with us. Much Thank you for having me here. All right. Much appreciated. Well, there you go. Thirst for knowledge, teamwork, and uh, don't forget, I like that story. Be like a dog to the bone if you really want to get somewhere. Jolly Mukorosi, who is an experienced trustee, and she also provides education in the field of trusteeship, chairperson of numerous provident funds and pension funds.